it's near Manchester. And uh, it's, the, it's considered to be the most safest of the labor seeds. The reason that it's considered to be the safest of the labor seeds is because of the fact that I have actually, sadly to say, a very high level of deprivation in my constituency. And not only is economic deprivation, but educational issues as well, as well as health challenges. And in the national indicators of looking at factors which are describe mortality or how many people live in their own homes or what sort of living standards they have, um, sadly parts of my constituency, not all, but some parts of it, do very badly under those indicators. Which presents a lot of challenges for us. Uh, one of my, I suppose, bone of contention with my own party was that when I was in power, number of years. It did, I think, quite a lot of good things in terms of uh, making some of the pensioners better, in terms of pension credit, family income trust credit. It did take a lot of people out of poverty, a lot of children were taken out of poverty. A lot of investment was done in Bolton and other places. But my party and even the current party now, the government, failed to tackle some of the material fundamental difficulties and challenges facing us people in my constituency. And this government over the last two, three years have just done nothing at all to help women. In fact, all the estimates that are being carried out, that off the brunt of the cuts in the so-called trying to get the budget deficit and budget reductions going, and all the cuts made in public sector services and other places, most of it, most of it has impacted on women more than even men. A woman, uh, Although a um, smaller portion of the workforce, and although uh, economically, um, over the course of a year, less than men who totally all up, in terms of having to make and give up their uh, the money, the, the reductions, they're paying over 70% of the cuts that we've been going by then. Now, none of these things are going to help with any power at all. Uh, the other thing to about a general picture about some of the challenges facing uh, minority children across the country, from some communities, and again, none of these particular cuts and things are going to help them either. There's always been a shortage of women in, I think, uh, certain fields. Uh, politics, there will be now, but that's only because, uh, not in my case, but uh, some years ago, the Labour Party brought in a policy of what they call uh, all women's shortlist. And the idea was that marginal seats, um, some safe labour seats, would have a woman candidate. The party would choose the constituency, but it had to be a woman. And that's why in 97, they were able to achieve from 100 women members of parliament. The Conservatives even then had about 15 or something. And I think it's well known the fact that in a lot of cases, women and MPs have become have had the chance to do so because of the fact that there has been an in what we call positive discrimination. And there may be an argument whether we should have quota system or not system. But we also know that in most of Scandinavian countries, the women are represented highly in the boardroom, uh, in businesses. That has also been achieved by a system of positive quotas as well. And now, at this moment in time, there has been, in the last year or so, some muttering the movement by all the political parties about the fact that they do want to encourage women into business, into enterprise, and talk about you women having directorships and being um, involved in uh, being sort of CEOs or directors of companies. And, you know, a big cable has, I think, set, and all the parties agree with this, that if in the next few years business doesn't put its house in order, they will go down the statutory road. I hope that they will put their house in order and not have to go through the statutory road. But it's still, uh, you know, uh, the challenge is huge. Challenges for women are generally huge, challenges for ethnic minority women, people from poorer backgrounds, and the minor sectors, they're well represented in ethnic minority groups. But most of them are still, I hate using these expressions, you know, white or brown, but they are what you call ethnically white um, constituents. And a lot of women there who uh, uh, come from, <coughs> who dropped out of school. Um, who have all the challenges that we talk about health issues, education, poverty, etc. Now, what we do, uh, uh, one of the reasons I know all this, not just because of what I read, um, research and whatever, because I walk around and I talk to the constituents, I knock on people's doors, to myself, say, you know, what do you want to raise, what issues.
issue. And then, of course, I get a, a nice news piece. I get a constituent case where a lot of these people are coming to me with their problems, individual problems. Sometimes we talk about national issues or ideological things or political concepts. But quite a lot of time, it's their general problem, whether it's housing, whether it's education, whether it's unemployment, whether it's health issues or whatever. And what I find the, uh, the common denominator of most of the people who come to my constituency surgeries regularly, and I have over 2,000 people at least case where I work, at least almost time on the day, um, are things like, you know, we drop out of school, haven't got a job, or um, the parents are unwell, they have to be the carers of a lot of are still the primary carers of the elders, and or the unwell members of the family. I talk about all these things, like, because these are the things that really cause obstruction for women getting involved in business and a lot of other things, because they're still very much, even though we were supposed to move ahead with time, women are still the, you know, obviously the child bearers, they're looking after the children, looking after the family, somebody's unwell, they've got responsibility. They can't participate and do kind of work which, which is not nine to five, which they can't run co terminus with taking the children to school and bringing them back home or making sure that everybody at home has had their dinner. Business is one of those things where uh, you know, you're going to be probably putting all sorts of funny hours, social, unsociable hours, weekend, evening, night. You don't know how business, you know, your business may be able at a particular time of very busy, you may have to work 24 7. And you know, for some, obviously, and I, I, I have a huge amount of respect for ladies. Especially ladies, you know, with all these people who are able to be successful business women and actually be professional career ladies as well, because it is enormous pressure. But I think, like business, unlike some other profession, um, is one that can be very time consuming and very odd hours. And um, I think what maybe the state needs to do, and that the state does help all local authorities or people, is actually one of the best things I think some women talk about is. You know, their, their caring responsibilities really have put them down. And I actually think that in situations like this, good, it's not sound like a basic, but good child care facility, which is not expensive, possibly even free at the point of use, so they can give their children a safe environment and feel that, you know, they uh, not forget about them, but the fact they don't have to worry about them constantly. And maybe a flexible system of working, of having these nurses open at different times of the day or night. I people not think about these things. But these things can support, actually, a lot of women who want to go into business or other professions well, other than they some. Um, so, when you see that, the other thing that I think we do need to do is we talk about literacy and education. I mean, you know, still too many people I know come out of school or you know, haven't got jobs and don't even know how to fill an application for me. They often have a problem with their particular organisation or institution. And all the sometimes looking for somebody to just write that letter for them, because they haven't got that ability to write a letter themselves or pick up the phone to ring and complain. And they come to their MP. It's not, you know, what they're asking you to do is rocket science or anything too complicated. It's really just some very basic simple stuff. And that's why I think that, you know, and I, I, I hands up my Successive political parties over the year, people have just forgotten these groups of people, and I think there has to be more targeted resources. And that's why I work on schemes in the economy of job centre, and I'm trying to run, you know, to get people into work, to give education, give qualification, um, support people, those who dropped out of school, give them a chance to have another chance to be able to study, support them. But, you know, it requires a financial outlay, but I, I think at the end of the day, when you get people being educated and start working, they become productive on the community, then they start paying taxes, and actually, you may have cost them initially the amount of money spent on improving their uh, situation, the fact that they'll be up on the field money working, paying taxes, looking after their families, their children, and themselves. And that can only be best, for, can only be good for the long-term future of our society. In fact, we have a very stable society, a much stronger society as a result of it. And therefore, I think concentrating on issues of child care, on looking after, especially young children as well, when they're coming out of school, because that's another way you need to tell.
have continually been welcoming up with the literacy issues, uh, reading skills. There were initiatives put in that at a very young age, like eight or two to three children should be held, perhaps given extra classes in the English and arithmetic skills so that um, they don't learn when they're in the school, they don't want to grow tired and lose concentration. Everyone knows that if you don't really understand what's being said, you're going to lose concentration, you might become very disruptive, which will lead to all sorts of other uh, consequences as well. So extra help for children in that age. Uh, I think these things actually, you know, is something maybe I'm actually with people to talk about, but actually these, what I call small targeted, um, uh, targeting groups and these situations will actually produce uh, a much better society and it will then give many women a chance to be actually think about other things than just sort of, gosh, we'll get three meals done today and, you know, what's, what am I going to cook next for the dinner? We, or even if they're working, some of them, you know, doing part-time work and they're coming home, clean the house and everything. So give them a chance to think about outside.